Hi, I'm Dr. Darshan. I'm a hand and reconstructive microsurgeon. In this episode, we'll be demonstrating about the motor examination of the upper limb. Some of the commonest things which we miss out is like, like the wasting of the muscles, the fasciculations what we see, and we need to look at the bulk of the muscles. These are the things which we miss out. So this can be prevented by undressing the patient. The first we need to look at the symmetry, the, the midline, the symmetry of the scapula, the medial border of the scapula on either side the lower angle of the scapula, usually this represents the uh, rhomboids and this represents a trapezius. Shrug your shoulder, yes, yeah, he's offering resistance, so both the trapezius are equal. Relax, so we have to ask his, to pull his chest back like this, so that shows the muscles of the rhomboids. Look in the between, on either side of the scapula, in between, relax. Next we will be checking for the latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi composes of the posterior aspect of the axilla, the latissimus dorsi. Now we'll ask him to pull his hand down. So we can see this latissimus dorsi acting all along. This is the latissimus dorsi, the posterior part of the muscles, the axill axillary fold. Is, this is demonstrate the latissimus dorsi. Demonstrating for the serratus anterior. Serratus anterior manifests as a finging of the scapula, which can be noticed on the medial border of the, but that is when the full bone blown condition. But if we have to check for the serratus anterior, we'll have to adduct the arm to about 90 degrees and abduct the shoulder to 90 degrees, ask him to bring it down and demonstrate the serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is and look for this movement of the scapula on the back. Relax. The other way is to ask him to stand. Can you please push the wall and notice for the medial border. Here there's no winging of the scapula which is shows that the serratus anterior is working. Relax please. I'll be demonstrating about the now upon the muscles of the deltoid and the supraspinatus. Supraspinatus has main function about of about the initial 30 degrees of abduction. The rest of the muscle action is done by the deltoid. Deltoid has mainly three parts: that is, anterior part, the middle fibers, and the posterior fibers. So each one can be separate uh, tested in individually, but the middle part is the main function which does it. Please lift your shoulder, yes, and offer resistance to this. So this demonstrates the middle fibers of the deltoid. If we want to see the anterior part, we will ask him to pull his arm towards his chest like this. If we have to see the posterior part of the deltoid, we will ask him to push his deltoid. So this is the posterior fibers of the deltoid. I will be demonstrating the pectoralis major. It has got two fibers. The one is a clavicular head, the other one is a sternal head. So each one has to be demonstrated in two different levels of abduction of the shoulder. For example, the sternal head, we need an abduction of about 120 degrees and to demonstrate the clavicular head, we need an abduction of about 60 degrees. So I'll ask him to abduct his shoulder about 120 degrees and bring it closer and offer resistance. Please pull your arm towards the chest, yes. This is about 120 degrees and this demonstrates degrees of sternal head. Relax, then we'll ask about maintain about 60 degrees of abduction, then ask him to bring closer to his chest, yes. So this demonstrates uh, pectoralis major or else in general if you want to check this uh, pectoralis major just like that we can offer resistance and about 90 degrees and both the heads together we can ask to bring it closer. Yes, that offers the resistance about for the pectoralis major. We can see the pectoralis major acting here. We will be checking about the triceps. We abduct the shoulder about and ask him to straighten the elbow like this. Please straighten the elbow. So we can see that I'm offering resistance, he's able to bring it. We have to check for the biceps, brachialis and the brachioral. The position of the forearm is different for each of these muscles. Although the sum of these function is shared by these muscles, that's elbow flexion is the predominantly is the function. The position of the forearm is different. Well, when we are checking for the biceps, the position of the forearm is in supination. For brachioral is it's mid prone and brachialis it's in the full pronation. For now we are checking for the biceps, ask him to make a fist in supination. Then we ask him to bend the elbow over like this. So this is for the biceps is acting. We can expose this muscle and we can see that the biceps is acting. When we are checking for the brachioradialis, we ask him to keep in mid prone and ask him to bend this elbow. Please bend it. And this brachioradialis stands out like a blade of the muscle which can be seen. That means it's acting. For brachialis, the muscle is it's difficult to isolate the muscle per se, but it's on either side of the biceps tendon is what we have to feel for to know feel for the brachialis. We have to keep the forearm in pronation like this and ask him to bend and feel for the brachialis. The other two muscles which can be checked with the elbow in flexion are the uh, pronator teres as well as the supinator. When we are checking for the pronator teres, we ask the stabilize the elbow like this and we try to supinate the forearm. We ask him to pronate it and feel for the pronator teres here. Relax. 
is when we are for supination we have to do the opposite that is we have to pronate the forearm and ask him to feel for the ask him to supinate the forearm so this is the opposite movement we check this is the way for checking for the pronated teres and supinate and the supinate now we'll be demonstrating the flexors of the long flexors of the uh, fingers as well as the flexors of the wrist which is mainly fcr fcu palmaris longus ftp fds of the hand so first thing we'll be demonstrating is ask him to make a fist and ask him to flex the wrist that will demonstrate the fcu and fcr together but we can isolate it by asking him to alna deviate and flex it please make a fist and flex it this is both we can see that fcr and fcu are acting if we ask him to alna deviate and and offer resistance that means the fcu which is one of the strongest tendons here which you can make feel of the other tendon is the palmaris longus palmaris longus also stands out proud the other ways to demonstrate palmaris longus is relax we can ask him to make a this thing and ask him to make a flex the wrist with the fingers extended please flex so that stands on the palmaris longus stands out the other way to demonstrate palmaris longus is ask them to make uh, oppose the with the little finger and ask him to press flex the wrist that shows the palmaris longus standing out prominently oppose the wrist oppose the fingers thumb and the little finger and ask him to feel now for resistance this stands out the palmaris longus is well seen here so this is one of the tests to demonstrate the palmaris long the flexor pollicis longus we can stabilize the mp joint of thumb with the proximal phalanx ask him to bend and offer resistance this shows the fpn this stabilization is essential or else there can be some other moments of the like adduction and which can be mistaken as as the palmaris long fpl is acting and the fdp and the fds of the other fingers can be assessed please stabilize the pip joint to assess the fdp and ask him to bend so this and offer resistance in case of tendon injuries or long standing injuries there are be fibrous connections between the proximal and the distal end which will allow just a small jog of movement so it is essential to offer resistance to it and assess the continuity of the tendon which is important similarly fdp of ring finger and fdp of middle finger can be assessed ask him to flex it bend and assess for the index finger we need to make o sign ask him to oppose his fingers with pad to pad like this and try to offer resistance to pull the little finger the index finger please do this do this do this yes and try to pull it away from the thumb so that shows that the fdp is acting of index finger for fds we can ask him to stabilize this and ask him to bend his fingers yes please this shows the fds similarly fds of this finger can be seen now we can see the small muscles of the hand which can be assessed the abductor pollicis brevis the adductor pollicis abductor digitum minimum and the opponens pollicis digitum minimum also can be assessed with the other test apart from the interosseous and the lumbricus the abductor pollicis brevis is assessed ask him to lift the thumb away from the table away from the table and to touch here this demonstrates the abductor pollicis brevis which stands prominently this is one of the important muscles which needs to be tested in median of injuries essential it's also called as a pen test there's a test something named as a pen test but if you ask this much to lift it away from that is sufficient enough to demonstrate ask him to lift it and hold it tight please hold it tight yes that demonstrates the abductor pollicis relax and if you want to see the adductors we can ask him to bring the thumb close to the palm like this please bring it and the essential thing is he should not be flexing it like this should not be doing it it should be done only the th thumb should be brought closer like this please bring it yes closer yes this has to be straight don't bend this this has to be brought straight yes the adductor is acting please bring it closer like this yes thank you next is the abductor digitum minimum ask him to bring it away from this so that we can see the puckering here and offer resistance at this point the proximal phalanx please bring your finger away yes bring it and we can see the puckering as well as this muscle mass here that shows the abductor digitum minimum next is the abductor dig uh, opponens digitum minimum can be assessed the way is he has to bring his the pads of both the little finger and thumb opposite please bring it and touch the pads of this and this lifts off this fifth metacarpal lifts off from the table that is the opponent's digitum minimum relax relax now bring it closer yes that lifts off this that means of opponent's digitum minimum is acting relax so we have finished the smaller muscles of thenar and the hypothenar muscles next is the interosseous and the lumbricus lumbricus we generally ask them to do this and uncurl his fingers with maintaining the flexion at the mp joint 
please uncurl your fingers please uncurl your fingers and you can offer resistance here which is the action of flexion at the mp joint and extension of the ip joint is the action of the lumbricals this demonstrates the lumbrical muscles relax please the other things which we can be demonstrated is the introsius the palmar introsius and the dorsal introsius the palmar introsius mainly responsible for the adduction of the fingers midline the middle finger is taken as the axis of this finger and the palm are the adduction of the peak and ask whenever while checking the introsia muscle ensure that the palm is rested on the table and ask them to adduct or abduct let the hand not be hanging in the air and tight because the long flexors of the extensor can substitute for this action whenever if the hand is not placed on the, the table and the forearm is not rested like this so we can ask him to abduct bring it to spread his fingers please spread your fingers and offer resistance and check all these tests have to be compared with opposite side for to know the exact power of these as mrc grading for these are quite difficult to assess. similarly middle finger can be assessed by doing this which is called the igawa's test of course these are various names please do this yes that means it's acting the other way to is ask him to bring these little fingers closer so that he doesn't fan it this is the adduction palmar uh introche which is the adduction and abduction is the uh, dorsal introsius which uh, is responsible for these movement so while some of these tests also be can be tested with a card test ask him to clamp it and ask him not to let it go please hold it tight and do not let it go it is quite strong it's not moving relax similarly in this finger also we can ask until it's not moving it's good this is the function of palmar introsius next is the thumb of the other extensors the thumb the extensors of the thumb for example epl epl there are several times we can see a cut on the dorsum of the finger we may not be able to make out whether the epl is cut and we just ask him to move which we will not be the best way to test is ask him to lift the thumb away from the table which shows the epl standing out prominently can you please lift your thumb away this is the this is one of the borders of the anatomical snuff box the epl stands curves like this and goes around the listus tubercle which is epl will be demonstrated similarly relax if you want to uh, demonstrate the abductor pollicis longus we ask him to bring the thumb away from the palm please bring it here if you want to see for the edc ask him to lift the fingers away from the table this shows the edc is acting please lift it up yes this shows that the edc is acting the other way is we can ask him to make it press and ask him to lift it this shows again shows that the edc is acting the ecrl and ecrb cannot be isolated the best way to check it make him fist and ask him to dorsiflex the wrist make lift it up please and offer resistance this shows that the ecrl and ecrb both are acting eip and the edq of the little finger which can be tested the best way to test them is ask them to make like this this is a stag horn sign or there are various names for this this is one of the ways to ask please make this please do it so that means the eip and the edq are acting the next group of muscles which i'll be testing testing for us infraspinatus the teres minor and the along with the subscapularis and in some conditions as i told for the latissimus dorsi for in this case like what i will be test first is the infraspinatus and the teres minor we'll ask the subject basically to abduct the arm and ask him to lift his arm again so can you please lift it up lift it up and offer resistance your rp offer resistance downwards and he will we have to ask him to lift it away please lift it up yes and you can stabilize the elbow please lift it up this is for the infraspinatus and for subscapularis we have to offer resistance this way and he will ask subject to bring his hand back we will have to offer resistance in the opposite direction that demonstrates subscapularis and in some conditions as i told in brachial flexors wherein he will not be able to sit and the, if we have to check for the latissimus dorsi we can ask him to reach his hand towards his knee this is the lattice mr dorsi which he's trying so this is a very good test in case of individuals who do not have active abduction so this comes to the end of the motor examination of the upper limb so we need to know about the past tone of the muscles which shows the human lesion which rules out the lesion and the examination for the brachial plexus follows a certain order like we have to what are the muscles we need to test from the roots what are the muscles we need to test from the trunks and the cords so each by these which are the roots which are involved for brachial plexus so which is called as walk down the brachial plexus so which allows us to identify 
with this knowledge, we'll be definitely be able to assess what are the roots involved, whether it's a brachial plexus injury or the cord injury. Re examination of the reflexes is an essential part of this ex of the motor examination also, because this allows us to know whether it's a UMN lesion or the LMN lesion. If the reflexes are brisk and the Babinski sign is positive, that means it's an upper motor neuron lesion. Thank you.